welcome to Dragon Quest 10, everyone. I'm Noaria. This is Mel. And today we're going to be starting on 4.3. Um, just to add on to last time, in order to do this, you will have to do the side story for Gatara before. I don't know if it's before you can add, start the whole thing or if it's going to stop you up before you get going. It looks like, according to this, in order to begin 4.3, in order to have the starting conversation with Lucenda, you do have to have completed the side story for Gatara. Okay. I'm glad I double checked that. But we did that a long time ago. Uh, it was... It was when we found Biandao in the uh, mechanical soldier junk in um, Dustin's house, his junk castle, and we went through that whole story. So uh, if you've forgotten about it, it's a good idea to refresh your memory. And it's required for what we're going to do next, which is go talk to Dushenda. So let's head over to the sage's office. Okay, what's going on now? Welcome, though. Uh, the reason I've called you is none other than that ominous cocoon. Not long ago, I received a communication from the Dorwam Kingdom that on the Dorachaka continent, out west of the Darazu mine, the, that ominous cocoon has been spotted. That black cloaked swordsman, according to what Princess Meriarde said, his name is Padre. His whereabouts are still unknown at this point, however, since the cocoon, or where the cocoon is, he is sure to appear. In that case, most likely this time as well. Before it's too late, you should head there right away. To start, head to, or go and hear the details from a soldier by the name of Kaachis who is in front of the, the sand dam in the uh, Darazu mine. All right. Let's see, what's the best way to get there? That is, is pretty far out there. I think I'm going to uh, take a broom zoom. Actually, the closest one that I know of is over in uh, Negistoris. So we'll take that one.
Okay, we want Dorchaka. Okay. Well, this looks to be the only one that's out in the Dada's mining area. I guess it could also be a quarry. Let's head there. Oh, this is right where we need to be. I wonder if they added this crystal recently. Well, added it when the V4 updates were going through. Well, there's the cocoon. It is definitely to the west. Um, where is the person I need to talk to? Is it this person? Yes, it is. Ah, jeez. I take it you are Mel. I am Kachis of the Doruam military? Army? Uh, I am grateful for your assistance. We were first dispatched here to act as guards for the researchers from the Doruam Royal Research Center. However, once that cocoon appeared, the situation changed. Right now, as the situation stands, we have changed to monitoring the movements of that cocoon and have built up the sand dam as our primary uh, base and we are hurriedly gathering information. Oh, it looks like someone's coming down from the sand dam. Mel. Is it really you, Mel? Oh, as I thought, it really is. I saw you from up on top the sand dam and came down in a hurry. Oh, you look so startled. Have you forgotten who I am? No, I haven't forgotten you. Oh, good. It would be hard to forget those days we spent I spent together with everyone in that junk castle, but just to be on the safe side, allow me to introduce myself. It is I, the first prince and true successor of the Gateria Empire, Biandao. Though right now I'm just ordinary Biandao. Ever since we parted ways in the ruins of Gatedia, I have been traveling around Estaltia. Right now, thanks to some bonds that I've created, I am helping out the Dorowam Research Institute uh, with their research into these lost or into lost ancient technology. This sand dam was long ago built by the Urvea underground empire uh, at great expense. Beyond the dam, there is a vast desert where the very important ruins of some empire lay, and I've come to investigate them.
And then this strange cocoon appeared right over top of those ruins. That cocoon has appeared before above Grand Zadora and Glen, so I have heard. And if left alone, there's no doubt it will bring disaster. I, who have been entrusted with Master Yu's hope, have decided to live in this world. I won't let my master's feelings be trampled upon. I am prepared to put my all into protecting the future of Estaltia. I am heading out to investigate the ruins in the quicksand. I would very much like you to accompany me. There is a cart there that you can see, which can be used to move to the top of the sand dam. First, uh, ride that to the top. Okay, well, you could have just waited for me. All right, well, Biandao's always in a hurry. <laughs> Do you want to ride the cart to the top of the sand dam? Yes. Bob Dabalina, welcome in. How's it going? Wow. Okay. It is certainly a vast desert out there. Wow. Okay. I'm supposed to come over here. All right. Oh wow, what is, what is this? I can't interact with it, so I guess I have to talk to this dwarf. Todoji, or Totoji. Uh, thank you for your hard work. I've heard what's going on from Bian. You are going to accompany him to the ruins in the quicksand. It is problematic to attempt to either walk or take a dole board across the quicksand ocean. Quicksand desert, I guess. Um, so to move across it, we have this specially crafted boat. Its name is the, the, the Eternal Gateria Go. It's like the, the equivalent of the SS Eternal Gateria. Right now, Bjorn is making the final adjustments, and once that is complete, then it will depart. These are yet unexplored ruins, so they may be dangerous and we don't know what will happen. Uh, Mel, are all of your preparations complete? Um, yeah, sure. Why not? Mel, over here. <laughs> wow. It's like a, a hover car. Actually reminds me more of, of Star Wars than uh, the Chrono Trigger epoch. This is a an amazing ship, isn't it? It can proceed freely over top of the quicksand. It is a high-powered hi or high-speed ship used exclusively for traveling across sand that has been revived or restored here in the modern era. 
It is known as the sand boat. Uh, we have a lot to talk about, and we have a lot to catch up on, but for now, let's head out toward the ruins. Uh, you will get a chance to see just how skillfully I control this craft. Uh, Mel got into the sand boat and they took off immediately at an amazingly high speed. Can't I sit down? <laughs> How do you feel riding across the the desert? We're going pretty fast, huh? But long ago, the Gateria Empire was an advanced civilization that prospered 3,000 years ago here on the Doachaka continent. We had uh, anti-gravity aircraft that would uh, fly us through the skies, and in the capital, there was automatically there were automatically moving walkways to allow you to get places without actually having to walk on your own two feet. If possible, I wish I could have shown you those sites. The scenery out here look all looks the same. It's just continuing endlessly. There are rumors that on days where there were sandstorms that a giant would appear. Oh, well that's not a giant, but I can see the ruins that we've come out here for. Let's head inside and start looking around. It's, it's pretty weathered down in here. It's, um, it looks miserable compared to how it should look, like, you know, would ordinarily have looked. It seems that the glory of the culture of Urdea has also become a fleeting dream of over 3,000 years ago. So what, what's going on? can take them. We've fought these things before. It's been 3,000 years and now they're moving? Mel, do something. Sure. We can handle this. Okay.
Okay. Cool. Oof. They're gonna bring the ruins crumbling down on top of us. Dang, all the knockdown. Wait, how many of these things are there going to be? Oh, cripes. You're kidding. down. Dang. Okay. Jay, no wonder it feels like this has been going on forever. What? <laughs> oh, you're kidding. All right, well. Yep, all three of them aimed at me. There was no getting out of that one. So far, I think it's up to... Oh? I got knocked down, but at least I shield guarded. Oh no, they're all angry at my... at my uh, summoner. This is chaotic.
right, once I take this one down, is another batch going to appear? No, oh, finally, it's the end of them. <laughs> the Urvea uh, magic soldiers, I guess we'll call them. What what was that just now? Look out, Mel. Oh no. All of a sudden, at Mel's feet, cracks appeared and it collapsed out from under her. That was a really long fall. Oh, you, you seem to be okay. I'm going to call for help right now. Mel, Mel, look at that. Oh, no. The outsider? Outsider of time? The earth vein crystal that was lost in the whirlwind downfall of that prosperous civilization. If I could only obtain that, then I could revive the giant. No matter how you think about it, the future of destruction coming to pass has something to do with him. He has gone to find the means to make the giant move again in the era when it was completed. We have to go and obtain it before he does. Using this giant as an intermediary, we can go to that era, which is 3,051 years in the past. Let's hurry up and activate the cube. Okay, so we are in the daughters and mines. Cripes. Okay. All right. Um. All right, we have that in the cube.
Okay. Where is this place? This is Kyoto to talking. There's nothing but sand and dust everywhere. It seems like an awful, miserable place. As you can probably guess, Mel, we've had a slight miscalculation with the coordinates again. Uh, you should start by... Or I recommend you investigate the area around you. Yeah, Mel's got a... What did they call this one? A, um... Machine board. Well, we are in an ancient place that is supposedly very technically advanced, so seems like a good place for it. Uh, there is a side quest around here somewhere. Ah, back there. Um... I am going to head to where I need to go first, and then we'll pick up side quests. So tell me, what is it that I need to do? This is the mine, or the, the quarry at the Darazu mine. Uh, the soldiers of Gateria, who have lost to the Uruvea underground empire, have been captured and forced into labor here. You've been wandering around looking like you're lost. If you want to get out of the mine, then go up those stairs over there. Or there's no way out but up those stairs. But what about... What about the down here? Okay. I thought it was going to be something important, but we can't get in. Alright, let's go up the stairs then. Take three steps that way. Oh, robot speech. Alert. Alert. I order you to stop immediately. What? Opening the data list of the Gatedia soldiers that are prisoners of war. Mismatched results. Following instructions of the emergency manual will restrain the subject. Mel was taken away to a room somewhere by the Uruvea mechanical soldiers. I'll probably alternate between mechanical and magical. Whoa! Maybe this was the room I couldn't get into. Enough already. Let her go, 08. Number 08. I am the engineer, Ryu. I am the one who created that magical, or that uh, machine, magical machine, that restrained you, number 08. Casey, thank you so much for the host. 
across the world, I am sometimes called Master Dew. Uh, for better or for worse, that is a name I am known by. You may have heard of me that way. In fact, I have. We are prisoners who have been captured by the Urvea Underground Empire. The Gatelia soldiers who lost the previous, or the, the Great War previously, have been, actually it's not, it's not clear if it's the whole war, if it was just a, a great battle, but the Gatelia soldiers who were taken as prisoners of war after that were seen as rebels to the Empire and have been brought here to do forced labor. They've really been working us over. Is something you could say, I suppose. But it's not that bad. Now then, number eight. According to the results of your scan, she is neither a... Gatelia, soldier prisoner of war, nor a an overseer from Urvea. Who are you? I see. Mel. You can't tell me the details, but you've come to this land searching for the giant. I won't question you too deeply about why you are searching for such a thing, but... Hmm... I don't know if this is the giant that you are looking for, but in the Ulvea Underground Empire, uh, it seems that they have completed a giant weapon that they have been working on, and it's called the Ulvea Great Machine. Or perhaps the Great Uvea machine? It seems that it is in the Uvea Empire's Technical Institute, where the most closely guarded secrets of the Uvea Underground Empire are gathered and kept watch over. Empire's Technical Institute is across a desert of quicksand and can be seen from the top of the sand dam here in the Darazu Mines. However, entry is not easy. It won't be easy to get inside. However, if we could get on that person's good side, then perhaps... I understand. Mel, I will cooperate in your search for this giant. O oh, eight. Begin reconnaissance 
minimum mode. Understood. What? What? It's so cute. I will send 08 here with you as a guide since you will be traveling lands you are unused to. He, or yeah, it says he. He will infiltrate Lavea with you. Now go and gather information on the Empire's Technical Institute. I will analyze the video and information that he sends to me from here. Yay, I have a new friend! Mel, I will go along with you. Like, without, without leaving your side. Oh wait, is now one of your companions! To start, you will need to head across the Gateria Lava Belt to the Gatara Great Forest, or Mountainous Forest, and then to the Uruvea Underground Empire. And there you must meet with Princess Ulta. If you are able to gain the trust of Princess Ulta, who is the current ruler of the Empire, then the path to the Uvea Great Machine should open for you. I'm counting on you. All right. I can't believe it crashed on the last line of dialogue. Okay. We have a side quest to pick up here. From... Onso? Oh, miss, are you a traveling adventurer? You must have a lot of time on your hands to come to a place like this. That's an, an envy to we who are stuck working all the time. That's right, I'm a former soldier of Gatedia. I was a mechanic working for the 7th Armored Division, the amazingly skilled Ponzo, they called me. Hmm? Hang on just a second. That thing hiding in your pocket there, is that... Is that an... Anti-gravity floating platform? I caught the scent of Dolcelin from it. It's it's on the the a uh, size that's um, small enough that you can go flying around on it. Hey, Miss, just just for a little while is okay, but will you let me see that? I'm just going to take a look at it. Okay, if that's all you're going to do. Yeah, he's talking about my dole board. I said, I just want to take a look at the, the moving parts. I want to make sure that it's in a proper state to be ridden on as um, an anti-gravity floating platform. Once, well, once you make sure that it is, talk to me. Do I have to mount? You hear a voice coming from somewhere. 
the anti-gravity floating platform that he's t this person is talking about is me. Your dole board. That's what I think anyway. Okay. So I have to... Mount up and then talk to him? Oh, this is it. It's a design different from the ones I'm used to, but without a doubt, this is an anti-gravity floating platform. I have an interest in machines like this, so it's brought me in contact with, or it's given me the chance to, to, um, to come in contact with things like this. Thanks to the huge anti-gravity flying machines becoming all the rage, these smaller anti-gravity floating platforms have all but gone out of use. I always took care of mine and rode it everywhere, but um, I was unable to get the parts I needed to keep it in good repair, so I had to let it go. To think that I would lay eyes on one of them again. Thanks, miss. Alright, I've decided. I always thought that someday I would start from scratch and make my own anti-gravity floating platform and now is the time. The problem is procurement of that thing. Oh, that's it. Miss, would you help me out with one little thing? Sure. The reward for whatever we're about to do is that we get to customize our dole board, so... Or it will be customized in some way. So let's do that. Oh, you'll help me out. I'm grateful for that. There's something that I want you to procure for me. And that thing is speed liquid. When an anti-gravity floating platform moves, it requires this material, which is, or th this material is, serves a very important purpose when the platform's moving. It's made from, is that distilling the sap from a certain tree that grows in the mine called a Hayanoki. Oh, purifying it, not... I suppose that's kind of the same thing. Um, so it's kind of a difficult thing to get. I mean, it's something you can't get naturally. And once it's collected, after about five minutes of real time, it will evaporate all on its own, or all at once. <sighs> okay. I see. <laughs> and so that's what I want to ask for your help with. Could you collect this sap and then before it disappears, hurry and bring it to me here? It is a timed fetch quest. In the northwestern part of the mine area. If you find a tree that hasn't dropped any of its leaves, that will be a Hayanoki. You should be able to collect some of the sap at the base of its roots. Oh, one other thing I want to warn you about. If you use a zoom stone or a traveler's door to move around, or you get on a cart, it will cause problems with the stabilization. So you're going to have to come straight back here 
without leaving the Darazu mine area. Do you understand? It, it has to be within five minutes of real time. You have an anti-gravity floating platform miss, so if you ride that, it shouldn't be a problem. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's interesting. I see. It's all the way up there. Okay. We will try to, do, we will do that one quest. And then I think I'm gonna call stream for the day. Staircases over here. Okay, there are. Yeah, I fear that, uh, my internet just isn't stable today, so I want to take a look at that. So since this is the only side quest in this area, we'll take care of it and uh, then we'll For the day. Welcome back, Casey. Okay. Is that the tree? Need a tree that hasn't lost its leaves. Okay. Alright, here we go. Five minutes once we pick this up. That shouldn't be a problem. There's a tree that still has its leaves. Mel cured some sap. I realized there was some sap pooled up there. This seems to be the Hayanoki that Ponzo spoke of. Do you want to collect the Hayanoki sap? Yes. Mal collected the Hayanoki sap that had gathered near the ground. Uh, once the sap was gathered, um, it seemed like it was a smaller amount than initially put in. Once it fully transforms, it will disappear. Without using a zoom stone or a minecart, you have five minutes from now to deliver it to Ponzo. Let's go! I 
I kind of wish it put a timer on my screen. Is there a way for me to get down into the camp from over here? Or is this all fenced off? Okay, well, that was a little bit of a shortcut. Okay, there's a staircase over here. No fights. But there was one if I'd went around the other way that would have been closer. Wait, where was... Where was the staircase? I think we're fine. He's over here. Alright, there's the bottle of sap. Oh, you're back. Did you collect the sap? Yes, here you go. I'll hand it in the Hayanoki sap. Oh, this is it! This is it! If I have this, then I can create some speed liquid. Wait, just a bit. I will uh, prepare it right away. Bonzo took out a container connected to a strange device and then poured the sap into it and pressed a switch. All right then, once the spe speed liquid is purified, it will become a high performance lubricant and it will allow the drive parts in the engine to move at optimal speeds. All right, all right, at last, I can see the completed form of an anti-gravity hovering platform. I've gathered all the rest of the necessary parts. Well, to be more precise, in truth, I had gathered them all long ago in preparation for making this. The spare parts for the magic soldiers are laying about all over the place, so I just borrowed them. But no matter what I did, I never had the spare time to actually go and get the speed liquid. And that was the only thing I was missing. You've really been a big help, miss. Now then, before I start putting everything together, there's one more favor I'd like to ask of you. Your anti-gravity hovering platform... It looks like it's made from materials that are unknown to me. Oh, I wonder if this has something to do with the, um, the upgrades that I've put it through. In particular, this bonding agent is amazing. It's strong enough that it could be used on an aircraft, but strangely very light. And, uh... 
the the heights it can reach the heights the the aircrafts can reach are because of that if the person who is tinkered on your anti-gravity floating platform is a craftsman that you know i would very much like to is that like exchange I'd like to I'd like them to share that bonding agent with me because if I'm gonna make something I want to make it the best it can be so what do you think please oh goodness if you have some idea of a dole board mechanic then go to that person and ask if they will share their bonding agent Hey, Drastic. Welcome in. Okay. Well, is this gonna... How much longer is this quest gonna go? We'll go t talk to her and, uh, and see what she says real quick. Have some business with me? From the look on your face, it seems that you do. Has something happened with your dole board? Let's hear it. Uh, someone named Bonzo is attempting to make their own dole board. And seems to want the bonding agent that was used on Mel's dole board. That's what she told Menmei. Bonding agent? That's an original formula of mine that I created. I don't know about just giving it to someone. I see. So your dole board wishes for it too. I understand. If I have the materials, then I can prepare some right away. Uh, so, gather the things that I'm about to tell you. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, it's a much more involved quest than I thought. Uh, defeat a Kombu Taisho at the Koniwe Plains to get a... What kind of a shell is that? A unity shell. I will make preparations for when you return. Or make- or prepare to make it when you return. Okay, it's just one thing. I thought we were gonna have to go out and get lots. Uh... We'll do this real quick. One of the seaweed guys.
should be some all along the coast. Ah, didn't even have to go as far as the coast. Shield guard! Okay. How's that? Alright, we got it. First try. Uh, dropped a shell that had been attached to it. We have the Unity shell. Okay. Back to Menmei. Here you go. Welcome back. Uh, if you have the Unity Shell, which is a material in the Bonding Agent, I'd like you to give it to me. Here you go. And I'll hand it over. Thank you. I will make the Bonding Agent now. took the unity shell that she had received from Mel and ground it down into dust. And then she took the multicolored fragments and mixed them with a shell that had been broken. After that, she added in some water. And then eventually a thick red paste, I guess, uh, was created. Hmm, it's done. This bonding agent is made from the Unity shell and some special materials that I will keep secret. It is my own special recipe. It is Menmei's special all-purpose putty this is the secret to maintaining uh or to my keeping your dole board in working order go ahead and take it okay we have the minmay special putty or all-purpose putty i'm interested in who you're planning to give it to but it might be best if i don't ask but just one thing. Right now, I am looking more into the history of dole boards. Uh, so if you happen to learn, or if I happen to learn anything, I will tell you. Okay. She'll probably have something else for us later. Let's um, hopefully go finish off this quest now. All right, here we go. Oh, I didn't take a look at it in my key items. Ah, you're back, miss. So how'd it go? Did you meet with the, the technician and get them to share their bonding agent? I'm just gonna say no here real quick. Um, okay, it's just in a little, looks like a mini paint can. 
All right. We want to give him the all-purpose, Menmei's all-purpose uh, putty that you received from Menmei. Yes. All right, handed it over. So this is, I see, it's all-purpose putty, you say? Huh. I see. Using this, you wouldn't have to have bolts, and so there wouldn't be as much strain on the parts. Um, so even where parts join together, it can stay plenty strong. All right, I'm gonna use this and put together my own anti-gravity hovering platform. Bonzo took out a whole heap of parts from somewhere and uh, scattered them about the place and began putting them together. Putting putty in between where the two parts are joined. This is forming such a strong bond. And then putting the speed liquid into the moving engine parts. And then we'll dock the, the power controls in here. And then the body will be powered through here. Huh. Thanks to the use of this putty, there's excess space available within the uh, within the machine that I didn't expect. Oh, I thought of something good. If we put a uh, dorsal in compressor in here then you'll be a then I'd be able to put more fuel inside after a fair amount of time had gone by uh, the machine was finished last is making adjustments to the maneuvering lever levers if this actually moves in this way, or if it doesn't actually move in the way that I want, then everything will be off from what I'm imagining. All right. The anti-gravity hovering platform is fully complete. It looks just like, just like the one I started with. <laughs> How about it? I based uh, the look of mine off of uh, the original design of yours. Ah, I love it. It's simple, but it has a strong feeling. This is its form. Is so unique. You could hear the dull board's voice. This is me? Might this person be... What's going on, miss? You've got kind of a complicated look on your face. Oh, sorry, sorry. I have prepared a reward for you. Go on and take this. Oh, I've got some dorsalin. And all of a sudden, a change happened in your dole board. It has become able to store three 
I guess, containers of dorsal and so it can run for 90 minutes now. So this is trying to tell me this is the person who made my original dole board and we've kind of changed history now. So it automatically made mine change because he created this one this way. That's really interesting. I suppose I should have guessed, because the quest name is Dolboard Origin. <laughs> no, thank you so much. To think the day would come when I'd see an anti-gravity hovering platform flying around again. Alright, I've made another decision. The Gateria Empire may be finished. But someday, here in the Urbea Empire, I'm going to cause the anti-gravity hovering platforms to have a boom again. And for that I'll have to put together some kind of mass production system. I'll have to create some kind of huge workshop here in the Dada Zumain. <laughs> Good luck! Thank you! That's awesome. Okay. Well... I guess our next orders take us away from this place, but uh, we'll be back here next time. I'm sorry it's a shorter stream. Here's hoping next week both the internet and uh, my health will cooperate better. But at least we got through, we got through some of it. We got- we got it started. Thank you all so much for joining me. Thanks for all the support of the channel. I appreciate it very much. Uh, I will be back on Sunday. And I hope you all have a wonderful weekend.